Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie up one of my favorite saltwater patterns. It's a little mackerel and it's a fly. Usually I'm down fishing in Florida. This year I'm not, don't look like I'm going to get there, but uh, it's a great pattern when you're down there fishing inshore. For any of you folks that get to the salt water, it's something you definitely want. And uh, this is a really good representation of a mackerel, which is a good uh, pattern to have near shore. Uh, caught a lot of different species on it out there. They're usually if you find your white bait, you're going to find some mackerel in there. You're going to find the bigger predators after those. So there's a fly. You want to make sure it's tied slender. It's got the right colors. And uh, let's go over the materials we need to tie this fly. I'm going to show it uh, today tied on a Gamagatsu octopus size 4. Typically I go with an owner hook. I always like to try on, uh, tie on these good uh, saltwater hooks. Owner builds a good hook. I'm, I've been very happy with them over the years. And there's others too that you can get good quality sharp hooks uh, for the salt. And uh, okay, let's go over the other materials. When you're going uh, tying lots of saltwater flies, you're going to want SF fibers. Now the Steve Farrah blend here, flash blend, we're going to go with a, there's a mackerel color for the top. I'm going to be using an off-white. This is a UV off-white for the belly. Uh, the latter line, I'm going to be using some UV chartreuse. And it does have some flash infused right into the material there. It's a very, very nice uh, material. We use it on lots and lots of, uh, of uh, flies we use in the salt. I'm also just going to put a little highlights in there. This is an emerald shiner um, kind of uh, a crystal flash. It's got a little white clear in there, some light green, just enough to give it a little scaly appearance. I don't want to overdo it with that. The topping, I'm going to be using some uh, grizzly hackle now, if you probably don't have the proper color of grizzly hackle, um, so if you don't, just make sure. I always found that you get some of these prism markers, and you can do a lot with those as far as sometimes thread colors. You can change up, you can change your material colors a little bit, and we're going to use that to, to get our uh, topping there. And that really does a nice job on the markings on a, on a mackerel pattern. And then right over the very top, I'm just going to take some, this is wing and flash, it's a bait fish mix, it's kind of got some green and blue in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. And the very important feature to have on any saltwater flies is a good molded eye. These are blue, silver, blacks, they've got a, a, an iris and pupil and everything on them. Uh, Bill Ballas, a good friend of mine that 10,000 Islands fly fishing, he give me those. They work great. Bill, Bill got a bunch of those made offshore somewhere. I don't know where he got them. But very much uh, a fly that you're going to need. And I usually, I just stuck these on just for demo for you today, but I, I put those on with marine goop and they'll be, uh, they'll stay on there very well with that. It's a good, it's a good little profile. When you look at it head on, it'll dart in the water. It's long and slender. It does the trick. So there you go. And we're going to just use some gray. I'm just using some gray 6 aught, And I use a uni thread. Usually I don't like to use smooth threads too much when I'm dealing with these slippery fibers. It's, uh, they slip on you too easily. Okay, so there's very, very little material. We're going to start here with our belly. We're just going to grab a little bit of our weight. You just pluck a little that out. The end just and don't pull it all out of the bag at once. It gets pretty unruly if you do. And then I'll just fold that in half. Clip that off. Now make sure that this is tapered. And I want a long slender fly. They're always gonna be eating this by the head. I'm gonna get that Taper there. I got a little bit left here, and what I'm going to do with that on the is just take that around the bottom, just fold that around the bottom of the shank, it covers up your hook, 
and that'll that'll be about it for that. Very very few materials utilized on this pattern, and a lot of times we overdress our flies. And this is one that can easily be overdressed. And then I'll come in with the UV chartreuse. Same again, just a small pinch of that. I'm going to fold it over itself, trim it, make sure the ends are tapered there again. I'll tie this right on top. And ahead of that little bit of white that I tied, it'll just kind of keep things on top. Fold this back over itself. A little bit of a little bit of a thickness on the front. And they you use the same materials that'll it'll, it'll comb out. I get a brush in there after and this will kind of meld together a little better. And get rid of those two colors. Come in here with the emerald shiner and I'm just going to take uh, this crystal flash. I'm going to take three strands or so of that on each side. Three or four. Here's four. That's good. Tie that on the top corner. This one goes in the other top corner. And it'll give you a nice coloration, little accent there on that. Then we'll bring in our mackerel color. SF fiber, just there again, just take a little bit. Because remember you're going to double it up. I'm going to make sure I got both ends tapered on this one. And we'll just hold pinch on top. You always just pinch the side of your shank to hold your materials, get lots of wraps. Pull that top over itself, now I'm pulling it back. And you'll see it took very, very little materials. It's pretty pricey this stuff if you if you just look at that, but if you're fishing salt water, you definitely want the SF fibers. And you can tie a ton of flies with a, a pack of that SF fibers. Worth its weight in gold. Don't don't chimp cheap out on that. Now I'll go into my uh, hackles here. I'm just going to grab a couple of my grizzly hackles off my little saddle. These are not that high end of saddles there. I'm not using it for dry flies or anything, just grizzly. But it's slender. I don't want it too fat. I'm just going to come in here now with my marker pen because I need blue and I'm just going to, I've got a, I always tie with a felt pad on my table. It's easier to pick up hooks and materials too, but now I'm just uh, coloring my hackle with my felt marker to get it the nice blue color I want or the top because they do have that that barred um, appearance. You can draw bars on them with a black marker on the on the pattern itself. Um, works for a lot of flies, but I like the mackerel. Definitely has very pronounced. Um, black bars on it all the way throughout. So we're just going to make sure that the uh, hackle is on the top corner. When I say that I don't put it on the very top of the fly. I'm putting it on the... I always look at my minnow patterns, bait fish patterns as quarters. Um, I tie it on the top corners. And make sure we got both lashed down there really well. Nip that off. When you're using six odd thread. You can go to three odd if you want, but you, get, you can get lots of turns and enough pressure on a six odd. I just want to get this head tapered down, and I'm putting a lot of turns on there, as you can see. Okay, that's good. Now you can see that the hackles are coming off the sides, off the top corners, like I say, not off the top, not off the sides either, okay? And then I'll come in just with a little bit of this wing and flash, the bait fish color. 
I don't mess with that too much. I'll just take it in the center of my thread and that goes right on the top. And that's a nice color in the water. Very, very nice. We're going to coat that up here with uh, Solar Res next. After I get my whip finish, get rid of the material that fell on my whip finisher. Whip that, get that out of the way. Then we'll uh, coat this with Solar Res. Runs into the materials a little bit. I'm using bone dry here. It's getting it a little thick. I'm going to thin that out with hot water. Just lay the bottle in some hot water and it'll thin that right out again. And we'll get our lamp. Let's cook that on. These are UV materials too that I'm using. And always a nice plus like UV on any fly that I can find it nowadays. Then I'll do these flies, I'll do a bunch of them at one time, or I'll do a whole batch. And I'll put the uh, little stick on here, just temporary, for me to show you what the... And I'm going to come in right tight in behind the... Right with that, get the iris pointing forward. Some of these are actually made that way. You know, flymen, they make a nice eye too. And, but I'll use marine goop. I'll goop that up and that'll make that just about bulletproof or pretty much bulletproof. I've never lost anything that way. And that'll last a long, long time. And you'll also get some mackerel, that bigger mackerel that'll hit this too. <laughs> They'll eat their own. So uh, make sure everything's nice for them toothy critters down there. Like I say, you'll be uh, surprised. It's quite a smorgasbord when you're fishing the salt water. Inshore, you're not sure what you're going to get, but uh, if you're in the bait, you're definitely into the, the predators will be there. And uh, here's definitely one you want. There's uh, Spanish mackerel. So, all the best. We thank you again for watching Sports Fishing on the Fly. We'll catch you again real soon.